Hello there, BookTube. My name is Valerie, and I'm very excited to have a video and to be in a new filming location because I finally am mostly moved into my new apartment and actually have time to film a video again. So uh, this is my new space for my bookshelf. Um, I really, really wish that I could somehow show you guys what my filming situation was like before I was almost literally filming under my dining room table uh, because that was the only space that had a bookshelf behind it that and space for me to put my camera in front of it. So, um, but now I have a new room that I thought was going to be a guest room slash office. It's turning into a guest room slash office slash library uh, because I ended up putting most of my bookshelves in here. So that happened, um, but I had this lovely bookshelf. You can still see some moving boxes, but we're getting there. So today I'm going to be doing the rapid fire book tag. I was tagged by Joyce from Jumble of Jargon, who is great, and you should check her channel out, link below. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first question is ebook or physical book? Um, physical book, obviously. Um, I do read ebooks sometimes, and it is nice to have something on Sometimes I read books on my phone um, if I don't have anything else available, but um, for the most part, obviously, I prefer physical books. Paperback or hardback? I would say paperback. Uh, the main reason I'm not a huge fan of hardcovers is I can't stand the little flimsy covers that go on them, and then I can't read the book with it on, so I have to take it off, and then who knows where it ends up, so... Um, I would much prefer a compact paperback that I can put in my purse and take to work with me. Online or in-store book shopping? This is tough because I do both, um, but I'm going to go with in-store. Um, I do some shopping on Amazon, but actually most of my books I end up buying at a store. Trilogies or series? I love both, and obviously some of my favorite books are part of a series like Harry Potter. Um, but I think, I think series can be difficult to keep up with sometimes, especially if it's a really long series, because if I don't find out about it, like if I find out about the series while the books are still coming out, then sometimes it's hard because I'll, the next book will come out and I can't remember what happened in the ones before that. So then I have to start over and it just takes forever. So, um, I think I'm going to go with trilogies on this one. Heroes or villains? I guess Heroes? A book you want everyone to read, and for that I'm gonna have to go with uh, The Shadow of the Wind or La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Safon. Um, this is one of my favorite books of all time, and I think it's especially good just for people who enjoy reading books. Um, the first sentence is about um, the author, the narrator, saying that he'll never forget the day that he, his father, first took him to the cemetery of forgotten books, and it just gets better from there. It's sad and funny, and has a giant puzzle at the heart of it, and I just recommend it to everybody. Recommend an underrated book. So for that, I'm going to go with Lost in a Good Book by Jasper Ford. Um, I, this is actually the second in his series, um, the Thursday Next series. So technically, I would recommend The Air Affair first. Uh, but this is my favorite of the three in the series that I've read so far. Um, I don't, I, I hardly ever see people talking about Jasper Ford on booktube. I think I've seen one other person talking about him, and I don't understand how that is because his books are really fun and witty and hilarious and have still have like a lot of layers to them. It's not just wackiness, um, which there's nothing wrong with just wackiness, but I just really enjoy these books and there's a lot of literary references. Again, a good book for people who like books. Um, so yeah, you should check out Jasper Ford because he's great. What was the last book that you finished? So the last book I finished yesterday was Silas Marner by George Eliot. Um, I'm currently doing a week-long readathon with a group on Goodreads, and so I'm trying to pick some of my shorter books to read so that I don't haven't read yet um, so that I can read more books um, and this is definitely one of the shorter books that I owned it's only 185 pages there were things about it that I loved and there were things that I wasn't a huge fan of so overall it was okay um, but I'll talk more about this book during my uh, June wrap-up the last book you bought so the last book I bought was the chimney sweepers come to dust by Alan Bradley this is one of the books in the Flavia Deleuze series. I'm, 
I've read four of the books and I think he's at like seven or eight. I want to say this is number seven, but I haven't gotten this far yet, but I saw it at the library on sale for 50 cents and I couldn't pass it up because I would love to own all of these because it's one of my favorite series. Weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark? Um, I guess mail sometimes. <laughs> it's not really that weird. I don't know. Receipts. I use receipts a lot. Used books? Yes or no? That would be a huge yes. Um, most of the books that I buy are used. Um, it's really hard to pass up because I uh, volunteer at my local library's bi-weekly book sale um, to help fund the library. And uh, yeah, it's a good thing I usually don't have a whole lot of time to browse at the sale when I volunteer uh, because otherwise I would be extremely broke. Um, but I do end up buying a lot of used books there, so used books are great. Top three favorite genres. I would say mysteries, fantasy, and classics. Borrow or buy? Buy. And though I do borrow some books from the library, um, a lot of times I have a hard time reading them before they're due, so I end up spending money on fines and I may as well have bought the book used. So usually I end up buying used books and then reading them when I eventually feel like it. Characters or plot? This is a really tough question and honestly it's pretty much a tie for me, but if I had to choose, I would say uh, plot because I do love a good plot twist. Long or short books? I would have to go with short, although I have been buying a lot of longer books lately, so I don't know how that's gonna go. Long or short chapters? Short. There's a few books that I've read, particularly the Amelia Peabody series is bad about this, where the chapters are like 40 pages, and I'm like, why do you even have chapters. Sometimes I only have time to read 20 pages or so and then I end up having to stop in the middle of a chapter, so I would definitely say short chapters are preferable. So the next question is name the first three books you think of. So the first three I thought of were Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because duh, um, and then Fire and Fog by, I don't even know the author, I haven't read this yet, Fire and Fog by Diane Day. Um, this is one of the books that was in my mystery bag of mysteries and um, I haven't read it yet but it's probably the one I'm going to read next so it was sitting on my desk so that's why I thought of it. And last one I thought of was The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley which is the first in the Flavia de Luz series just because it's one of my favorite series. Books that make you laugh or cry. So obviously books that make me laugh, anything by Jasper Ford, he's hilarious and I couldn't really think of like particular authors that make me cry. Um, lots of books have made me cry, but um, one author that occasionally makes me cry is Elizabeth Peters in the Amelia Peabody series, depending on the book. Our world or fictional world? Fictional world, of course. Audiobooks, yes or no? Until recently, I would have said no, but I recently started listening to audiobooks, so I'm totally for audiobooks now. Um, I'm actually going to be making a video all about audiobooks soon, so I will talk more about that then. Do you ever judge a book by its cover? I'm sad to say that yes, I do. Um, one example that I thought of of this is I have this book, Bone Dance by Emma Bull, and I kind of like this cover. Um, it's colorful and, I don't know, it makes me want to read the book. Um, I haven't yet, but it makes me want to. Um, but uh, I'm going to link below or like post a picture or something to the cover of this book that's on Goodreads that's from I don't know when, but it is like the most atrociously 80s cover that I've ever seen. And if I had seen that at a used bookstore, I never in a million years would have bought that book. So just goes to show you can't always judge a book by its cover, but we still do. But that's okay. Book to movie or book to TV adaptations? I'm not sure if it's asking either or or if I'm for or against them. I assumed it meant if I was for or against them. Um, I mean, TV or movie depends on the book. If it's a really long book or a series like Game of Thrones or something, then obviously a TV suits it. TV show would suit it better, but for the most part, I'm I'm cool with, with book to TV and book to movie adaptations. A movie or a TV adaptation that you preferred to the book, and the only example I have of that, but it's a great example, is The Lord of the Rings. Um, I read the books in high school, um, as the movies were coming out actually, and I very much appreciate and admire all of the work that J.R.R. Tolkien put into creating that world and the characters and the story. Um, 
but I found the books a bit dry at times. Um, and I liked how, you know, sometimes in the books, um, it would take pages for him to describe something where in the movie they could just establish that with a beautiful shot of New Zealand and then move along with the story. So, um, again, I think J.R.R. Tolkien is great, but the books were just a bit dry for me. And the last question is series or standalones? And for that, I'm gonna have to go with series. I don't know that I read a whole lot of standalones. I mean, and then the Renan is a standalone, but Right now, I don't really read a whole lot of standalones now that I think about it. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with series. So that is the rapid fire book tag. Um, thank you, Joyce, for tagging me. And um, I'm not gonna tag anyone. I just, I don't know who's done this tag and hasn't. So if you wanna do the tag and you're watching this video, consider yourself tagged. You are more than welcome to do it. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.